Hey, this is an introduction to chi-squared test of homogeneity. Also, we will do scenario one, and we're beginning on page 229. Uh, so the chi-squared test of homogeneity is a hypothesis test used to compare samples from two or more populations. This is the key difference from uh, a test of independence. A test of independence was two variables from a single population. Here we have two or more populations in regards to a single variable. So um, very, very close. And I have a definite bias against the chi-square test of homogeneity. I don't particularly care for it because it runs exactly like a chi-square test of independence. Um, they say they are different and they are different because this is two or more populations. The other one was a single population. So this is two or more populations with a single variable whereas uh, independence is one population, two or more variables. Very, very similar. Um, and the purpose is to test to determine whether or not the proportion is the same for all populations. So we're looking to see, are the proportions the same? And that's kind of a key word. The null alternative hypothesis for this test needs to be written in sentences. And the test of homogeneity, like all chi-squared tests, is um, right tail. So degrees of freedom. As you know, goodness of fit. For goodness of fit, chi-squared goodness of fit, we had um, categories minus one. Here is this exactly the same as independence, row minus one times columns minus one. All right, so it's exactly the same. Our null and, hypo null and alternative hypothesis, we're gonna be phrased like this. The proportions are the same for whatever it is we're looking for, or the proportions are not the same. Keywords, proportions, or ratios. And by the way, you don't need to say whether it's a chi-square test or homogeneity. You can just write the formula, you write the formula, you're good to go. The only problem that you might run into is a null, null and alternative, and I'll try to give you some help with that. Once again, um, it's still the same formula, observed minus expected squared divided by expected. Uh, and when you are actually looking at it, it's gonna look like and run exactly like a chi-squared test of independence. Once again, the difference between a chi-squared test of independence and a chi-squared test of homogeneity is the design of the test. If the samples are from two or more populations and are comparing a single variable, then it's homogeneity. Look for multiple populations or multiple samples. Multiple populations or multiple samples, homogeneity, all right? On the other hand, if the test is drawn from a single sample as comparing two or more variables, here we say comparing two or more variables, here we have two more populations to see if there's a relationship um, is a chi-squared test of independence. Also, there's only one sample here, but the easiest thing to do to keep them straight is chi-squared test of independence has some very, very obvious words. Independence. Relation. Association. Or dependence. If you see these words, it's a chi-squared test of independence, all right? Regardless, they still run exactly the same way. So here we go. Recipe of success, going to look exactly the same. So I'm not even gonna spend time with that. We're gonna go ahead and move on into running our first uh, scenario. So we're on page 231 of the notes borrow, and this is our first scenario. In a large city, a group of AP statistics students work together on a project to determine which group of school employees has the greatest proportion who are dissatisfied. So here's the key word. So we have groups, so that lets me know we got multiple categories, so that tells me we're looking for a chi-squared. In independent, simple, random samples, oh, we have more than one. More than one sample, chi-squared homogeneity. Can't even spell it today, so I'm not gonna worry about it. 
homogeneity. There we go. So we have 100 teachers, 60 administrators, 45 custodians, and 55 secretaries. The number uh, with their jobs were found to be etc. All right. So here they are. They filled it out. These are satisfied. These were not satisfied. And we can total these up. And this is 100, 60, 45, 55. And I add all those up and I get 260. I add all these up and I get 190. And I add all these up and I get 70. So the very first thing we have to do is write our null alternative hypothesis. And they want to say, is there evidence that job satisfaction varies by employee? They didn't use the word independent. They didn't use the word dependent. They didn't use the word relationship. But I look at this table. And because of this table, it's like, you know what? This is some sort of chi-squared test, given the table. And it can't be goodness of fit because I have too many rows and columns. Matter of fact, I can already tell you that my degrees of freedom are going to be one, two, three, four. So four minus one times one, two. So two minus one, because it's, remember it's rows minus one times column minus one. So three times one. So the degrees of freedom is three. And I apologize if y'all are hearing someone edge outside, but it is what it is. So get to listen to a little landscape going on. So the degrees of freedom in this case are three. All right. So what's my null hypothesis? Well, I know this is not a statement of independence because it didn't ask me. It asked me if they vary. I know this has to be, can't be goodness of fit. So this must be chi-squared homogeneity. So the proportions, the proportion of what type of employee? Satisfied. is the same for each job type. The proportion of satisfied is the same for each job type. I probably said it should say satisfied employees, but whatever. HA, the proportion of satisfied employees is not the same for, jo for each job type. Now remember, is is the same as saying equal is not is the same as saying not equal. So we need to be consistent throughout all of our null and alternatives that we're always making an equal up here and then a not equal through there. Conditions. Our very first condition was we need independent random samples. And guess what? They tell us independent random samples. They don't tell us how many, but I'm guessing they did one for teachers, one for administrators, one for custodians, and one for secretaries. So independent random samples given, all right? Independent random samples, and that's given. The next thing, we need to have n is less than, um, N is less than um, 10%. So in this case, 260 divided by 0.1 equals 2,600. Reasonable to assume that there are more than 2,600 school employees in the city.
n is less than 10%. of the population. Sure hope y'all can hear me over that and I apologize once again. The next thing, we need to do our expected values. Expected values. Greater than equal to five, see the table. We'll come back and do that in a moment. We'll come back and spend some time doing that. You know what? No, let's spend some time doing it now. So expected values need to be greater than or equal to five. And we're going to say, see the table. And this is going to show you how similar it is to what we did before. So basically, I'm going to need to go 190 times 100 and divide it by 260. So 190 times 100 divided by 260. And I'm going to expect something around 73.077. Now I can do that by hand every single time. Or like before, I can, like on the test of independence, I can enter the matrix. So we're going to enter the matrix. So second matrix, edit. We have one, two, three, four um, rows and one, two columns. And 82, enter, 38, enter, 34, enter, 36, enter, 18, and 18. I enter that data wrong, back up, 82, enter, 18, enter, 38, enter, 22, enter, 34, enter, 11, enter, 36, enter, 19, enter. Does that match? Yes, it does. So I'm going to second quit. And I'm going to go ahead and run this test. Stat, test, chi-squared test, A, B, and calculate. And we're going to note down our stuff right now. So we ended up with a chi-squared equal to 8.707. We have a p-value equal to 0 0.033. And of course, our degrees of freedom actually matched what we did when we did them by hand. All right? So. Let's re-enter the matrix, but this time instead of matrix A, we're going to enter matrix B. And we're going to go second matrix, edit, drop down to B, press enter, and voila, we have our um, expected values. So I have 43.846. I have 32.885. And I have 40.192. Here I have 26.923, and 14.808. All right, so we've now entered, we've got all of our expected values. We have decimals, we don't care. It's okay for these to be decimals. Remember, they just need to be greater than five. All of them are, so we're good to go. So that's good. So then we need to look for our observed data, are all of them, and we can have observed data less than five, that's fine. And our observed data is all greater than five, but the observed data must be all counted values. It is all home numbers. For observed data is or are counted values slash whole numbers. All right. So we've already done this now, and I'm going to go ahead and up here, I acknowledge that it was a chi squared and it's observed minus expected squared over expected. We'll write our formula and we'll get into this thing. As I said, this is gonna run and as hopefully you're seeing very much like a chi-squared um, test of independence. So chi-squared equals observed minus expected squared over expected. 
and we needed to deal with our first one. And our first one was 82 minus 73.077 squared over 73.077 plus dot, 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 plus 19 minus 14.088. And that equals, and if I added up, if I added all these up, I would have equaled that 8.707 that we already got. And just in case you forgot where I got it from, um, stat test, chi squared test. Eight point seven oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Eight, yeah, eight point seven oh seven. And there is our p-value. And I do want to remind you again that you can get your p-value a different way, and that's important to know because sometimes the way it works out on a multiple choice test. So, uh, just so you know, if they give you a chi-squared statistic, you can go to second bars, chi-squared CDF. My lower bound in this case is 8.707. And my degrees of freedom happen to be four. How did that not work out? That's exactly. Stat test, chi-squared test, boom, 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 calculate. 8.7068 degree, oh, sorry, stats test. So second bars. I was wondering where I messed up. Second bars, chi-squared, CDF. My degrees of freedom were not four. My degrees of freedom that we calculated, is we went rows minus one. So we had four minus one, so parentheses, four minus one, close parentheses, times two minus one, close parentheses. 0.03345. So our p-value, which is what we got from the screen earlier, 0 0.0033, alpha 0 0.05. So this is less than. So we're going to, our decision is we reject the null. We reject the null. And now we can go ahead and write our conclusion out. Our P value is 0 0.033. We reject the null. Excuse me for just a moment. I have to step, step away. So our p-value is 0 0.033. We reject the null. Um, there is sufficient evidence at alpha equal 0 0.05 to suggest that the proportion of satisfied of satisfied employees varies or is not the same for each job type. So simplified satisfaction, job satisfaction, excuse me, job satisfaction varies based on job 
type. Okay, so basically we have enough information to say that satisfaction appears to vary by job type. And that answers the, the, the uh, question that they ask. All right. In other words, they're not independent. There's a relationship. That's not what they asked, but that's what it is. So thank you.